How's it going YouTube? So today we're going to be replacing a throttle body on my 2005 Chevy Trailblazer. Um, I'm having an issue where it cuts the P1235 code and what it does when it cuts that code is I'll lose all engine acceleration and it pretty much can't do anything. Now I went ahead and ran it using torque P1235 and the other code is a unrelated fault. But uh, P2135 is a throttle position sensor switch A-B circuit correlation, meaning that your A and your B have to be reading similarly. I guess it's a fail-safe in the car, which makes sense. You want to have a verification so that if you have your foot off the pedal and one sees it is all the way down, it doesn't just take that and run with it. So I guess when one of the circuits fails, the other circuit doesn't fail, you then have where the two voltages don't match up with each other. Now, there are a lot of ways that you can go through and test the pins on them, and I tested my pins earlier, incorrectly tested it, and think that that's my issue. Now, I don't totally know, because I went to the junkyard, grabbed this one, and when I was testing it, I'm like, huh, that one's bad too. Read my instructions, which, there'll be a link down below that's got like a whole bunch of tests you can do on it, that's just using a basic multimeter, as long as you have an ohm setting. But I'm now going to go through and retest this in accordance with the link and see if that's actually testing bad. And even if it's not testing bad, I'm probably going to go ahead and swap it. I already did all the testing on this one. This one is testing good. All it does is it tests, you take your multimeter and you want a little set of uh, gator clips so you can uh, clip onto the pins in there. And then as you open and close the throttle body, you'll get certain readings depending on if it's good or not. And this will tell you, I don't know where they are, but it's like, you know, if you're seeing three to five K ohms of, you know, reading, this is good. If it's below one K ohm, it's bad and a bunch of stuff like that. So the link in the description, I really suggest you check out if you're troubleshooting this issue. But uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and actually tear this open because I'm gonna pull that out and I'll show you the testing on it, but I'm going to replace it anyways, just cause I have this here. That being said, the testing can be done. If you take this out, you can test it right there in the car still. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. So to pull it, I have a 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt there, and then I'm going to loosen a flathead and that will let me pull the whole airbox back this way so I can get up in there. And also I'm going to unplug the sensor so that I don't accidentally damage it in the process. So once you have those uh, two bolts on the side and this piece loosened, just come to your passenger side, pull it this way. That will make it pop off your throttle body assembly and then you can lift it up and just kind of tuck it back this way. Uh, however you'd like to do it. Just don't flex it too, too much. But uh, next up, I'm gonna get this clip off and then there's four bolts on the throttle body that look like they're probably a 10 or a 12 millimeter. Pull that off and I should be able to just bring the throttle body right off nice and easy. When you unplug this from your throttle body, watch out because it kind of tees off and pulls to this so you don't want to jerk it too far back or you might hurt that. Just kind of tuck it off to the side. That was my multimeter turning off. Also there's a fuel line that goes here so should just be a little clip. When I get it off I'll show you how that comes off. Okay. So for that clip, I was able to just pull it. It didn't feel like that's how it was supposed to come off. Here's the clip right here, so you can kind of see what the inside of it looks like. Looks like it really should just be you push down that tab and then pull out. Uh, looking at this throttle body, it looks really clean inside. Okay, that side, not so much, never mind. Compared to my junkyard one, a little dirty and a little dirty, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just wipe that out. But we're going to go ahead and on this one, I'll take you through the testing. So everything that I'm talking about is going to be coming from that link directly in the description. But if you look at this, this is the connector on the throttle body. So this is this here. The four across the top are A through D and then E through H on the bottom. So when I'm saying like I'm on pins this and this, it's coming directly from this. If you go to the link, it's in multiple sites like I printed out the sections of the article it's on that page also so it's really easy to follow along if you have a multimeter that can do ohms and this uh web page from my description full disclosure i didn't make the web page i can't state that it's 100 percent accurate however super easy to follow and a lot of people have recommended it 
So first thing is plugging into C and G on this, just setting it to the ohms and I'm getting a 3.44 reading. According to this, this person says about 3k ohms, which mine does say k ohm up there, it's just really small. So about three, we're there. So that's saying that we have continuity between these two with some amount of resistance. If I unplug this, you'll see OL come up on my screen in a second. That would be a sign of a bad uh, throttle body in there. I plug this back in, it should come back to that 3.4 number. And just to kind of show once again, this site is amazing. Your test results out of the test we just did, and it says, you know, you see continuity, this is correct, you don't see it, you have a short circuit problem in your throttle body. And then I'll go into the next test. I think there's four of them. Okay, so now we're on clips A and G. Doesn't really matter what order yours are in. And we're seeing 2.6, which is two to three is a good reading. So we're good there. And this is where the alligator clips really come in handy. Because now I have to come here and I open this butterfly. And as I open the butterfly, you see that starts going up and it's gonna go back down because I have to move my finger. But as I open this, okay, we're at 3.5 there, keep opening, 3.7, 4.0, all the way up to 4.9. And then I slowly close it, and we'll see it slowly go back down. 2.7, now if I force it closed, so like before I was opening it, so it would go this way, and it kind of stops and it's not quite shut, so now if I close it, it should drop a little more. Yep, 2 point. So once again, uh, we are seeing two to three, we opened it to a wide open throttle, we saw four to five, which is good, and then it decreases as we pushed it closed. So we also passed this test. So now I'm on B and H, once again, making sure that my clips aren't touching other pins. I have a 2.2 reading, which uh, we are just testing for continuity. They got around 2K ohms, so that passes also. And then once again, it passed that test. And we're gonna do the same thing where we move them once more and we open and close to test the B circuit now. Okay, so now we're on the B and D, we're registering 2.4, and now when we open it, this should drop. So we see it going down, going down, going down, all the way in there's that wide open, and we're at 1.04. So let's go ahead and close it, and then same thing, now I'll like it's kind of closed, I'll push it to close it more. So when I push it, we're at 2.4 where it's normal, push it and it goes up. So this is the inverse of that first situation we did and it passed. So that says it's pretty good. We're, we're gonna now test the TAC motor. So this actually gives me some hope. So what we do is we go to the E and F pins, and then we look at the ohms reading. According to this test, between 2 and 13 ohms is a good result. We get 1.3 on the one that I took out of the vehicle. Uh, it says anything below a 1 is a sign of short circuiting. So I, I, I'm below what they say is acceptable. I'm going to do just this test on the junkyard one and just kind of see, are we like closer to that two number? Because if so, then maybe it is this that's bad. I, I don't know. So on this one, we're reading 1.8 ohms. Once again, it says two to 13 is normal. Below one is a sign of short circuiting internally. This is the junkyard one. That's the one that came out of my car. I mean, we're definitely looking better. So... I'm gonna put this in. The video will be held to change this, and I'll, I'll see if this fixes my problem. If not, then I'll have another video about some other piece of this. But, uh, so for now, I went through how to test these. Next step, I was just kind of reading these, and it's saying, like, if you're seeing continuity, you're good. We see continuity, not in the range that it says. Uh, if we see zero ohms, or close to zero ohms, then the TAC meter has short-circuited uh, short internally replace the throttle actuator assembly. On these, they all come together. So like you can't just buy like a single piece of this. It's a whole unit that they sell. So I'm gonna be replacing the throttle actuator and the throttle body and you know, two birds with one stone. One thing real quick, these, if you buy them like from Rock Auto, they're like 125 bucks. If you get them from 
like your normal parts store, they're two to three hundred. I picked this one up from a salvage yard that I get a lot of stuff from for 50 bucks, and the guy let me do this ohm test right there on the counter before I paid for the part, so I definitely think it's, like, I'm doing this just because I've tested this. I know this is good. I like this one's readings a little better than that one. We'll see. Okay, so I went ahead and, I mean, it's still not real clean, but I did clean up the worst of the gunk in this. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on. Remember, it's the four bolts, the connector, the fuel line. And I'll catch back up with you in a minute. Two things to remember as you're putting these back in. One, make sure that, like, you don't super tighten one of these down before you get all of them started. Get them all in there. Make sure you're lined up. Two, that little clip that you push down to pull this out, when you push it in, you kind of have to, like, pull that up and into a notch on there. And then, once it's on there, it's not going to come off real easy. If you don't put it into that notch then it's going to just want to pop right back off. But okay, we got all that put back on. We're going to go ahead and put our air box back on, tighten this up, and put the two bolts in it. And then once you have all that done, don't forget about the sensor that we unplugged here so that we wouldn't break it. You want to make sure you get that plugged back in. And then once it's plugged in, push the gray clip down so it won't pop off. Same thing on this. Once you push it in, it's a little gray clip, make sure you push that in. If you're having problems getting this off, you have to like pull the gray clip back first and then pull that off. Once again, the only tools were a 10 millimeter with an extension and a flathead screwdriver. And then for the testing, a multimeter and the website in my description. So if that helped you, ooh, that's a lot of exposure. If that helped you, please leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment if you would like. Remember, we still have the big behemoth of a plow truck that we're going to be working on. This car is not on the channel. It's a buddy of mine. But that truck's going to need a ton of work. So one final check for me. We'll go ahead and fire this up. Throttle's responding. And that was my final check. Your final check is to make sure that you like and subscribe. Until next time.